Um, so first of all, I want to thank the organizers for having this event and um, also for having me here. Um, and I also want to make a pitch for this that I hope you'll all read. Um, it's really an amazing document that covers a ton of material and um, I think is useful and I'm going to use some of it to um, kind of highlight what I'm going to say. So I want to start with the problem and the problem is an absolute shortage of health workers and that's not just nurses, it's not just doctors, it's pretty much every level of health worker throughout the health system in poor countries and that's really our starting point. That's led us to task shifting. So task shifting is using less trained health workers to do complex tasks that previously would have been done by a better, a, a more rigorously trained or longer trained health worker. It's important that we start at this point because we need to understand that what we're trying to do is to use very condensed, very short training and a variety of other tools to enable health workers to do things that previously they would have been unable to do. That's why we need to really focus on how do we train them quickly and efficiently and well, and as I'm going to talk about in a minute, how do we support them after the training. There's an absolute shortage of community health workers. This, is, this chart is from the report, um, as are a number of the other um, graphics that I'm going to use. And this even more puts an onus on us to figure out how to train people quickly and well and how to support them so they stay in their job and do their job well. So this talks about training and training being not simply starting out and recruiting and so forth but pre-service training, in-service, in-service refresher and then support and supervision. And for those of you that know what I do and what Dietrich International does, it won't be a surprise that I'm going to spend a lot of my time talking about supervision and support. Training is important, but it's not sufficient. If we train people well, even excellently, and send them out never to be seen again, which is what often happens, those people will, over time, not be able to perform adequate services. We have to put in place some kind of a system that enables us to support them as they do their job to provide in-service training and so forth. Face-to-face -face supervision is the holy grail. The problem is it's a holy grail that's almost never reached. I don't think I've ever seen any program, including where I work at Harvard, where there's good face-to-face -face supervision. There are too many constraints, transportation, motivation, I don't know what to do when I get out there, all of the various things that prohibit face-to-face -face supervision. The solution, like with training, needs to be something more blended. So this also from the uh, report, it won't be a surprise that I'm highlighting what Dietrich does. We provide decision support to enable health workers at the point of care do a better job. We do that through a variety of mechanisms that I'm going to bring you through quickly. But what we're talking about here then is beginning to end support of community health workers that's technology enabled. In other words, how do we use technology to improve the training, to improve the in-service, in-service refresher, supervision, and support? In terms of supervision, which I'm going to talk about for a minute, these five things, decision support, alerts, monitoring, links or communication, and opportunities for new learning. So decision support, that's probably what Dietrich, that is decision tree, um, does and is well known for, looks like this. 
in real time at the point of care, you're providing the health worker with menus that ask questions. They prompt the health worker to ask, how sick is the child? Is it an emergency? The child's very sick. What are the symptoms? Do they have a fever, cough? This is a takeoff from IMCI that many of you will be familiar with. A child with a cough, do they have other symptoms? Are they getting sicker? What's their respiratory rate? Do they have indrawing, et cetera? Based on that and that, um, they have pneumonia, in fact, severe pneumonia due to the indrawing, so we're gonna treat the child and refer them on. That kind of decision support is what we do. It's feasible, it's being done, and it's an integral part, in my view, of how we get health workers, community health workers, nurses, others, to do their job effectively. Alerts to prompt action. This is a community health worker receiving a text message that says, oops, you missed the following clients, you need to go see them. Remote monitoring of care, because you're using decision support at the point of care you're able to monitor that. It's all fed to um, uh, a server, and that server then enables supervisors, program managers to have performance reports about what's going on. So we want to train people, we want to give them the support, and then we want to provide managers and supervisors with information about what it is they're actually doing, how can they do it better, so when they do do supervision, they have real things to talk about. It's also very important to give links. One of the hallmarks of community health workers is they feel isolated. They're sent out there, they never see their supervisor, they never hear from the normal, from the um, formal health system. They can't really talk to each other, they're isolated. Providing them with a way to talk to other health personnel, whether it's nurses to whom they refer things, their peers that they can call, um, whatever it is to give them a lifeline to the outside world so when they have a problem that they don't know how to solve, they have, a, they have somebody whom they can go to for help. And opportunities to learn new skills. Um, I'd like to think that community health workers, in fact all health workers, don't end learning when they end school. It's been a long time since I've been to school. It's been a short time. No, I continue to learn every day, as I'm sure I will here. Giving health workers the opportunities to learn new skills is critical to their effective performance. Does it work? Just a couple of examples. Um, this is from our own research. This is with Child Health, where we looked at whether um, point of care decision support enables health workers to provide better care. This is adherence to protocols in IMCI. If you look at the red in particular, severe pneumonia, using paper-based IMCI, 20% got the correct diagnosis. 64% using EIMCI got the correct diagnosis. Not perfect, but a lot better than paper. The bottom line is electronic decision support works. Another example, this is in Zanzibar, a little bit north of here, uh, maternal health where we had a project um, using a variety of things on a phone, point of care diagnostics with uh, TBAs to identify mothers who were in trouble and needed to be transferred immediately to a health facility we also combine mobile banking, recorded permissions, et cetera. Bottom line is that when compared to baseline, huge increase in the percentage of women getting to a health facility to deliver. Again, the point is this works. So beginning to end support of community health workers, that's technology avail um, enabled in a wide area. I showed you child health and reproductive health, preventive care, chronic disease, everything else. What we're trying to build is a better system to train, reinforce that training and support community health workers so at the end of the day, they provide excellent care to people in the community. Thank you very much.